Hello. Hi, everyone. So let's take a moment to enjoy this nice photo of a rhino in its natural environment. If you look closely, you will see a second rhino hiding in the corner. So this photo was taken by a colleague of mine when in an African park testing trackers for this magnificent, magnificent animals. And you will see quite a heartbreaking story today, how while technology helps, we all should do better to help save the animals, the planet, and everything that we're doing. So, um, just a bit about me. My name is uh, Luca Mustafa. Um, so I'm from company Irnas, um, where we develop connected uh, devices. Um, so our, you know, we work with corporates, we design products on Bluetooth and so forth. We are a Zephyr project member, we are a Nordic partner and so on. However, uh, we also have an environment strategy. So this is my ask first for all of you that you promote in your companies where you are to have a strategy, to figure out what you can do better. For example, what we are doing is we strive to produce more energy than we use, uh, we ask every client to build a better, a friendlier product to the environment if possible. And also one of the activities is we're subsidizing nature development projects. And with that part, we are working with an organization called Smart Parks. Um, that is a Dutch organization focused at delivering technical solutions to wildlife parks in Africa. So their mission is protecting wildlife with passion and technology and we provide the technology part. Um, so for the story today, um, a lot of things had to be changed, not to be too specific, to protect some very guilty parties involved. Um, but if we look closer in this photo, you can see some things. You, know, you will see the Smart Parks team on top of a hill in Africa, setting up a LoRa base station to receive information from all the trackers and technology in the area. However, also in the photo, you cannot see, but they're there. There's a few rhinos hiding in the trees. There's about seven lions there, some cheetahs, plenty of wild buck, and also a small platoon of park rangers. People on the ground, boots on the ground, really making sure that funny business does not happen in the area. At the same time, there's also likely two poachers just waiting to shoot some kind of an animal somewhere. However, without technology, this is a, just a vast field. You have no idea where is what and what's happening there. So to empower people that are local there, that are actually running the whole parks, trying to protect the environment and the animals, we need to empower them with technology. And one of the ways we've been doing this is with the open color ecosystem. So for the past four years, we have building various trackers uh, for rhinos, for elephants, for cheetahs, um, even trackers like this that park rangers can carry around. So their command center knows where they are. Fence monitors, for example, to see the high voltage fences and so on. And these things enable a better management of very, very scarce resources. You know, just to compare some scales, for example, if for the size of the whole large Prague area, there might be two people on foot walking around. Like it, it's a vast, vast, vast space. And everything we can do to help manage that process makes it a lot more efficient. Now, the biggest challenge there is there is that the Animals we are all trying to protect are worth more dead than alive. Rhino horns are more valuable per weight than gold, than cocaine, and various other things. Meaning that the motivation on the you know, bad party side is very, very high. And on the other hand, there's a small group of people on the ground trying to protect them. So they are really, really outnumbered. And we want to balance the scales a bit to at least give them a fighting chance 
to survive and to be protected. So the way we approached from our expertise working with the smart parks is to design the open color devices, the whole architecture um, of solutions around this. The trackers, one of them is here, and I'll show more in a second, um, all run on the NRF52 platform with Zephyr RTOS. Now what this enables us to do very efficiently is, you've seen all of the trackers we have there. Essentially, they run all the same firmware with different board builds and variants, which means that on our part, as a development partner, we can be very effective at doing the development, at adding the new features for all the various use cases. And we can focus more on the actual application and practical features. What is mainly used, because these are very remote areas, is LoRa communication. There's Bluetooth and Wi-Fi to talk to the phones, to download data, to configure things. There's satellite connectivity. There's a bunch of sensors. And it's all really, really low power. Some of these devices work for multiple years on one or two small batteries. Some a bit larger can do, obviously, more. But the general aim is to provide a full integration to Earth Ranger, which you'll see in a moment. That is a nice platform which shows to people on the ground where what is, so they can decide where to send. Um, so looking at the technology, it can really help protect the, the animals, the environment, because it tells us on time what is happening and where. Here you see a nice example of a base station on top of a hill, completely standalone and solar powered, receiving LoRa signals from everything in the area, using Wi-Fi links to bring that to a central location where the park management is located. Now, if we go back to our dear Rhino, we can see that we have significantly upgraded our Rhino. It's the Rhino 2.0. It, you take a rhino horn, and just to be clear, this is a 3D printed plastic rhino horn. It's not a real thing. We designed a tracker, which is you know, as big as we can make it, so we can have the largest batteries we can. And we packed it full of functionality, so we can go drill a hole, put the tracker in, and now you have your upgraded rhino that is giving you a position every 15 minutes, or upon alerts and events happening. So that allows the Rhino to freely roam around and you know where it is. Um, and when something strange happens, you can be alerted about uh, the whole thing. Um, what's also interesting to note is that Rhino horn is actually nose hair with some glue. So it grows and in about two years, this tracker will move up and fall out because the horn will grow and then you put a new one in. So we match the battery life of this to the actual application. Now, because rhinos come in all sorts and shapes and sizes, we have designed various trackers. So the cube is a really small one. There's a mid-sized one. And there's, this is the largest one there is. So going to the story of our rhino. You've seen it in the first photo. It's roaming around in the area. Again, to be very clear, the map is made up, the location is made up, it's not showing real data. However, if we observe closely, we see a scenario. So this is the Earth Ranger environment where the park management sees where people are. So you see boots on the ground there. You see a rhino named Fato in this case, roaming around in the area. But if you look closely, you will see a very, very interesting point. You will see that suddenly the rhino starts moving in a straight line, which is very, very strange. So something funny happened. Either rhino, you know, learned to fly, flies in a straight line, or it's no longer a rhino. And in the next slide, I will show a reasonably graphic image. So I warn you and feel free to 
look away if you're sensitive to that kind of content. But this is where the rhino is. It was shot and the horn was cut off with the chainsaw. If the rhino is lucky, then it was dead before that happened. And even that's not the case in most situations. And this is not a rare event. This happens every single day. There's one less rhino. And not to talk only about rhinos, that happens for other species as well. And the fighting chance we're giving them is using the trackers. So feel free to look at the next slide now. So this is the horn that was poached from a rhino. However, because it was equipped with technology, it was equipped with a tracker running Zephyr Artos and all our awesome components, poachers were caught because they were running in a straight line away and we could see the real-time location. They were caught because they were caught with a horn that had a log of GPS positions inside, which were downloaded and used as evidence that they are the ones that were doing that. And also, not to waste a really good horn, and you know, this is a strange story to say, rhino horn material is really hard to come by. Like, we need to tune the antennas to the rhino horn. There is no rhino horn we can use in, in Europe. You know? we, we can't get it to the RF lab. And also, the rhino horn needs to be fresh, meaning it still needs to have the moisture content for the RF performance to be right. So we sent a team to Africa with all the RF tuning equipment and a small lab to wait for a rhino to be killed to get the horn to be able to test it. It's really tough to think about it that way. But the outcomes of the whole thing are that we have a better chance of helping them survive. So the trackers help coordinate efforts. They help improve the chances that the very few people on the ground, and you know, it's hard to understand the situation. Usually, you know, these are guys that have boots and maybe they have one rifle amongst five people. Like, these are really limited resources. If they can be in the right area, more will survive. So the real benefit here is we can catch poachers and take legal action against them. On the technical side, we see how this awesome piece of technology we're all either using, contributing, building, maintaining. So thank you everyone that's here putting in the efforts is used to save some lives, like physically actually save them. And where's the future? Where is this going? So we are making this pieces of hardware smart. We are in the process of adding machine learning features. For example, to detect when the rhino horn is being detached from the animal or when the motion pattern matches that of a car, not on, of a four-legged animal. We are trying to make this thing smaller so they can fit on more animals. For example, pangolins are one of those sorts and various, various others and to really be on the leading edge of technology. And while this may be surprising, nature conservation is so starved for good solutions that they're willing to accept all the new technologies. Like probably rhinos had LoRa before any other commercial deployment because it came out and was rolled out immediately. And so goes for everything that's coming out because it's really the leading edge of where we can be going. So with that, I would like to leave you with a thought that you find the best way you can contribute in your professional lives to the environment, to making this world a better place. And everyone has a chance. You're always good at something. So just do that in the right direction. If you would like to find out more, you can talk to me next to the Memphis booth on the other side after the keynotes. And feel free to find more things online and yeah, keep up the good work, keep up the 
you know, excellent innovation that has been going on in this room because we put it to good use. Thank you very much. <laughs>